Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show, the number one comedy business podcast in the world. Pragmatic entrepreneurial advice with Dick Jones. Every time we're ruining our guest's career as we speak. With oh, <laughs> that, that other voice you're hearing is <laughs> Serena Fazan. Fazan. Did I do it right? I did it right. I did it right. Yeah, then he, he and, retracted and it. Is she is we need to geek her mic up. That other voice you're hearing, that sultry that sultry voice you're hearing is uh, Eric Redinger, I'm Law Smith. This episode of Sweat Equity is brought to you by ExpressVPN, try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Gets you three months free off an oh. annual plan. What's ExpressVPN, you say? It's a virtual private network. It's a computer in the sky. You want to get an IP in a different country, you get this service. You don't want to be tracked by big data, try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Hooks that up. Holler if you hear me. <laughs> uh, get three months free with our link, try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Grasshopper, Grasshopper, try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Gets you $75 off an annual plan. Grasshopper is a business phone line. Don't have a Google voice for your business, your side hustle, whatever you're trying to do. Don't have your personal number and you go, you answer the phone for your business going, hello, who this? <laughs> Don't be that jabroni. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat, like key sweat. Gets you $75 off an annual plan. And lastly, Warby Parker, warbyparkertrial.com forward slash sweat. Gets you five free pairs to try on at home. I, if you're watching this video version of us on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, LinkedIn, your mom's Walkman, I'm wearing <laughs> my Warby Parker uh, prescription glasses. I typed it in. I got five pairs to send to my fat face, and it worked out. I thought you had great vision. I have, I have good vision. I got... I got one thing where I get little starbursty things. Oh. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. I'm 2021 I and 2015 in the other fighter pilot shit. Five free pairs right, to right, try on at home. Right. I wear them to look smarter. Okay? I was gonna, I was gonna say you look super cool. In that. <laughs> yeah, super that's, cool. That's what a lot of chicks say. <laughs> well, they let's say get it just like that. <laughs> let's get this party started. Howdy, Johnny! Sweat equity. Sweat equity. Our our best guest, returning guest. Oh, oh. my favorite. Yes, for sure. Nice. Yeah, this is so sweet. We'll butter your bread, of course. Oh my gosh! Well, I was about to comment though on. I love your open. That open is so cool. The music? Yeah, and the whole sweat equity. Like, how did you guys create that? Like, how was... Well, the theme music? I just love the that, whole open. I'm that, so into no, we, we're musicians. We okay. I, no, <laughs> I downloaded another genius's work that yeah. was uh, royalty-free, paid for it. On and mo- then moose8.com, I believe. No, it was uh, or, premiumbeats.com. Oh, you, got, you did that one. I thought it was the 80s track I gave you. Oh, well, I'm talking about the one, the Sweat Equity mm-hmm, one, or well, mm-hmm. whatever. And then I heard uh, Louis Anderson and Zach Galifianakis on that show, uh, Baskets, talking about Sweat Equity. And I was like, oh, get my recorder. And then I recorded it, and yeah. then I chopped it up. Well, it's awesome. And I have to say, I, you know, it's all thanks to Eric that I have my podcast that it, I love. This the is name of it. How do we find it? On the Record with Serena Fazan. Can you pronounce my Fazan. last name? Fazan. Yeah. But it's you all. You know when, like, it's, you fuck up, like, from it's the get-go? It's all thanks to you guys. <laughs> and I shouldn't say, now, not just Eric, but I'm just saying that thanks to you guys. But remember how it started as Trailblazer? Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. No, but it's thanks to the two of you yeah. that I have a podcast. And I love, it's my favorite thing on the planet is my podcast. I love it. It's, it's it's, um, yeah, yeah. We just had a, a, a episode before this recording with our buddy Tim Jones, and uh, we were trying to, you know, tell persuade him he should start it because it, there's just a lot of extra benefits to doing it, even if it's not going to be wild like the Rogan experience, you know, like Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, popular. It, there's a lot of just uh, it's just a good kind of habit almost. It's great. You know, know, conversations, being able to get your feelings out, right. <laughs> discussing world events, whatever it may be. Are you talking about... Laws I've, vasectomy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, you did not. Yeah. Last no. Two <laughs> days ago. Why are you so oh, upset? Because, oh. I mean, I just... Did, did you baby, want to come with me to see it? Yeah, well, your babies are 
so I know. I'm 2-0. Oh. I'm 2-0. Oh. But, yeah, oh, dude. But what if you meet? What if you meet? I can reverse it. Hey, okay. Okay. Can that's, cause well, what if you if meet, I meet someone a, that, you know. Her or him in the future. <laughs> who knows? True. I could, I could. You can always adopt. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's, true. There's true. a lot of stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> true. You can always adopt, so right? Moral what shade you, in there. But what you did is what all my female friends have done when I've, when they've, I've told them about it. They, they do this thing where it's like, did you think about it kind of thing? I'm like, yeah, I thought about it a well, lot. No one wants to get their dong uh, singed with well, like, like little smoke coming up as I could see it. It's, it's gnarly. I can, you know, I mean, I can only imagine. I guess what I am in love with love, right? So I have my Love in America podcast, and my Dating in America, and I always think of young women, right? Who, I mean, you guys are catches. Come on, you know. I know. And what if, what if, like, what if, you know, one of them doesn't have a child and wants to have a child? I cannot believe we're going. There I, and we're I talking about uh, equity. You, you knew it. We've been going <laughs> yeah. for six minutes. What are you talking about? We've been yeah. about so long. <laughs> it's like penis <laughs> right away. Well, we were saying off air right before we, we got on. It's like uh, I, you know I, we haven't. I have missed seeing some friends that I routinely yeah. see like yourself. It just uh, it feels weird. Like everybody took a, a gap year, you know, or a yeah. mulligan year to see. You know, a lot of people uh, for you know, months, if not the whole year kind of thing. And so it's weird that we're catching up like kind of like this. Right. Because now things are starting to Florida's uh, Florida is the most American state doing, doing the Lord's work uh, for the rest of the country. That's my, my thing is I continue to stick up for Florida and everything. Yeah. Um, We get to do stuff. (laughs) Well, look, we're open. We're open. We're like the most open state and everybody gives a shit. And then it's just like, well, someone, some, some state should be the, the guinea pig. You know? Yeah, let us take it. Yeah. Take everything else. Well, how do you guys feel about when well, the economic development or uh, uh, depression of it is is killing? Like, I think that mental side is going to have a way worse outcome of shutting down everything mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Depression, domestic violence is up. All those things. The, all those, all those, in, you know, those. Uh, the symptoms of shutting shit down business-wise is going to have this impact down the line that is, I don't know, it's going to be tough to kind of quantify. For years to come. Right. For years to come. Yeah. For sure. No, I worry, I really do worry about the emotional aspect of so many people not being able to see people or connect or losing their jobs, losing their homes. I mean, I worry about that more, quite frankly, as well. You know, the law... taking on too much. Yeah. You can't be worrying about that. I mean, it's... No, you're right. I mean, your you know, own stuff to worry about. Well, you're, but you're, you're doing kind of a more of a. I mean, you you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. You you were a news anchor for how, I don't you yeah know, for, um, for local news here for how many years? So altogether, as a news anchor for twenty three years, right? You know, so yeah. and just absorbing all all sorts of news oh, all the yeah. time. I have to say, it is a bit refreshing, though, that, that I am so passionate, as you guys know, about videos and sharing people's stories, but not being so obsessed with the news all the time. Right. You oh, know? yeah. Trust me, you're preaching to the choir. We just, yeah. we, you know, we just checked out. It's like, unless it's told word of mouth to us for a lot of stuff, yeah. we don't hear about it. Because mm-hmm. it, 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 it doesn't matter. Most right. of the stuff doesn't matter. Like, great, it's it's good to hear about the murder downtown. What am I going to do about it? Right. What matters is your family, your right. life, your friends, you know, your future. I know. Um, uh, just news fatigue, mm-hmm. though. I, I have such distrust, mistr- mistrust, I guess. Or they, They're speaking out of disinformation, misinformation in a lot of ways. And everybody kind of knows it and generally... Half the people in America are just like, yeah, but I still like it anyway. Or yeah. I want to hate on the, I will watch to hate on the other team. I saw an infographic the other day that had all the it, the real causes of death in America and what the percentages worked out to be, and then what the news, re- the amount of deaths and how they were reported in the news. It's like totally off, you know. Like the, the real causes of death are, you know, heart disease or whatever, and then it's like Very reporting weird. on terrorism, which is like. What? How many people died from terrorism last year? Like, sure, there's some, and that sucks. But like, to take that on to make it into this life 
you know, in consuming thing. It's just, God, how can you even live that way? Well, how can you even put these numbers out there? Because uh, hospitals will go, if you had COVID, it, this is what really jumped the shark. And we talked about it on the show, I think, in the summer. I saw a news report. Uh, just walking by, I saw, like, the news is on at the gym or something. I saw, like, bottom line was, like, uh, guy uh, dies in a motorcycle accident and gets listed as COVID. Um, right. Because he had COVID. So that's a COVID death. And mm-hmm. you're like, okay. But it was a motorcycle accident. I know. Right. right. So, so we need, like, maybe a weighted version of death of a death bill. Like, the Heisman Trophy voting, your first place gets three votes. Second place gets two two points. Third, it's one point. Yeah. So why can't we have a weighted thing? Because most deaths, they're saying, is like, it's usually not just one thing. It'll be a confluence or whatever of, uh, of a few things. But we're, we're going to have a real problem with data I see in the next decade or two about it being reliable or relevant, and people don't have enough time to go research the statistics on everything. But you have to look at like incentives. Like, wh- okay, why would hospitals do this? Oh, well, they get more funding... Uh, or they're, they're, they're not yeah, We're public. the number one coronavirus hospital in the, in the country. And I'm, I'm Look dumb. how many I, deaths there I, were. For, I forgot most, uh, almost all hospitals are private. So it's like right. they act as a business. So yeah. it's like that thing of like, oh, well, that's, that's their incentive, incentive because, because they, they can, can get, get some kind of uh, subsidy maybe or, or, or some, some kind of funding from the state or, or the country if their numbers are juked all the way up. Well, you know, the bottom line, I think, too, sadly, people don't know what to believe. Right. That's what's so sad. And that's why we've just been like, mm-hmm. if it's important, it'll get to us mm-hmm. kind of thing. I feel the same way. And I don't know, a lot of the people that I'm close to or close friends of mine. And again, as you guys know, I news was my life. I mean, news, I, I love news and I'm sharing it in a different way. But so many of, so many people I'm close to, yes, are not watching because they just don't know what to believe. Yeah. And it, and it, and it is, it's um, Corona fatigue. Yeah. This is corona fatigue. You know, we've had political fatigue before. Yeah. It's just, I think people are, I think either way people are. Well, I, here was my question to you guys. Are you looking forward to 2021? Are you we'll looking- let you hijack our podcast. <laughs> and, and Why? Host it. That's fine. She does all the work for us. What are you I know, talking it's about? Great. I love it. I just love that she'll, she'll do it on the slide. I almost said something earlier when you, said that, when you asked the question. Like, don't interrupt Serena's podcast, dude. <laughs> You called us a catch earlier. You got us. Right. You got us all. I like, know you do whatever she wants. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I can't help it as a journalist in me. No, no, I, no it's questions. fine. It's fine. Look, if we're, we're, we're hanging out anyway, you, we both be asking questions uh, about what's going on. Uh, what, the, what, uh, what was the question again? About 20, you know, I don't feel like all of a sudden in 2021 and wow, it's a perfect world and so on and so forth. But I think so many people, and I think the world for the so many people, anyway, are so looking forward just to putting 2020 oh, behind yeah. us. Would sure. you guys agree? Do you guys yes. think so? Yeah, and it's lining up kind of like kind of nicely with the vaccine kind of becoming publicly available more and more. So I feel like that's going to help kind of get rid of this mulligan year. I don't know. For me, I think the election was a big turning point sort of mentally for – I mean, for me, it was like, okay – we're not all crazy. Most people are normal. Most people can, you know, like step up and, and it, the world is normal again. Sort yeah. of idea, if that makes sense, where it's just like we had a year of just insanity. Mm-hmm. People just doing whatever they wanted. Where it's just like, okay, well, there's got to be consequences to this. Maybe you lose an election for it sort of thing. Well, I mean, he got... It got stolen from them, right? Well, like, you know, the votes aren't counted yet and all that, so <laughs> let's uh, be sure and say that, allegedly. <laughs> cool, coolest president of all time. Right. Gone well, now. Big Daddy Donnie T. Right. <laughs> um, that's, that's my favorite thing to say, my like, super liberal friends. Got it. Got it. Well, uh, you know. Okay. It kills, trust me. It, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it got to start some shit a little bit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and then you leave. I think I lost a friend because I, I voted for Kanye, but oh well. Uh... <laughs> He's like very upset and sent me a text message. How dare you about it. disrespect like, well, the democracy? If, yeah, I was like, I would have left it blank. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I don't know. I think uh, it'll be nice. It'll feel closure ish, but I don't know. Uh, I'm a big thing. I think about like a new year, and everyone's like, it's gonna fucking happen this year, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And a lot of people do that. And really, I'm trying to not be like. Uh, 
do that thing because I'll go hard in the paint like everybody else for January, February and stuff and then die out. So I don't know. For personally, uh, I think it's – I'm trying to work on like consistency of trying to get to goals mm-hmm. and not letting a lot of shit get in the way that doesn't matter. Like – a lot of this new shit, like a lot of wasted time, right? Realistically, it's just it's a, just another day. It's a calendar situation, you know. Like it, until you really change your own mental state, it don't matter. It's what year it is. Right by yourself. Well, I was, you know, it's funny. Like when twenty twenty first came around, I think so many people. I was like, oh wow, thank goodness, twenty twenty, a new decade, a new start, yeah. fresh beginnings, and then. Bam, all of this happened, right? So, yes to your point, and yes to your point, Eric, as well, that um, it, is, it is another day. It's, it's what you do and how you set the tone for your life, no matter what day or no matter what year it is. Um, but I will say I am looking forward to at least starting a new year. You know, whether it's subconsciously or whatever it is, I'll share this too. So people always say journaling is great, right? But for whatever reason, I can't pick up the journal and journal. But I did oh, get a journalist journal. journalist or anything. Not that I'm a journalist or anything. <laughs> I did get a journal from Sammy, my 13-year-old, mm-hmm. for Christmas. And for whatever reason, it's something to look forward to. I want to start journaling on the first. Now, how long that's going to last? You know, like you always make these resolutions where I'm going to you know, work out every day. I'm going to do this and that. And who knows how long it's going to last. But... I am looking forward to a new year, is the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you make it not a, a chore, something mm-hmm. to look forward to, something mm-hmm. that, like, brings you some mental clarity. You know, I totally get it. Just getting it out. Get yes. whatever out. Just get it out, and then you can leave it. Because if you don't, it, lots of times you'll just think about it all day, whatever it is, good or bad, you know. If it, if it helps, uh, like, because I've done that, too, where it feels like a chore after a while. Yes, right. But it, uh, and you can go kind of the thing of like, you don't have to, you get to. Right. If anything, you know, it's it's a luxury to be able to have time to sit down and mm-hmm. do that. And you can look at it kind of that way. Sometimes that helps me. The other thing is like, it's like going to the gym in the same respect of like, I'll f- I know I'll feel better after or days after if I do this consistently. So if I remember those things, the after effects of it, that I know is good, I don't know. I feel like that will help me want to do it more. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. and my Kegels. I, I know <laughs> Kegels are good for me. <laughs> don't do those until your stitches are healed, dude. No, I'm good, man. I, I, what did Dr. Kierington say about Kegels? He said, Kegels, oh Kegels. He said your pro career is probably over doing that the ping pong shows. But, uh, mm, you know. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We need that I'm on the amateur stream. circuit. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> um, But yeah, Side it's bed. one of those things of like, and I don't know, I think with every bad, there's a good. We talk about that a lot on the podcast. It's, uh, if, if there's, there's anything to be grateful for, like things will, they, things will open back up. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we've talked about it too, that I have no doubt we will figure out a vaccine. Like, I'm so confident. And America, well. and, and we have too many smart people in the world yeah. not to. And I really believe, uh, uh, like, the entrepreneurial spirit of Americans too. I can get real corny about it, but like, people, a lot of people will figure. Like, a lot of people will fail. It's going to take out a lot of like service industry stuff, for example, right? They're 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 beyond fucked in a lot of cases. But there's a lot of other people that are figuring out either how to pivot in 2020. The, the main word of 2020, uh, yeah. uh, how to pivot, how to re-strategize, how to get, you know, work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Um, and sometimes you need that to make you move forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need that hiccup to to get that continuous improvement you should have been doing before any of this, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's all between your ears, you know? It's... You can use 2021 as an excuse to change that. Do it, you know. But, I mean, I'm sitting here saying, oh, there's the calendar. 2021, I'm going to do different shit, too. Like, yeah, I mean, whatever. Like, you have, there's a thing, you know, where it's like, there's so much stuff we know that it's the same idea as going to church every week. I know what they're going to say if I went to church. 
I know what they're gonna say, you know, I know, but people go, you have to be reminded of things. Like you go to the church of Satan, but not, not every week. No, we don't have to do that. We Zoom call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's just like if you need twenty twenty one to be your reason to kind of switch things up, do it, you know, but keep doing it. You know, don't be like, Oh, I'm done. Yeah, Back right. to the old life. And I really try to take this week. This I'm tr- I might do this every year. Where we take. I, I try, try to. Do, I used to do it from like kind of Thanksgiving to uh, the New Year, and like really think about what you want to do for the next year. Because mm-hmm. if, if you, you rush to do it, it's not going to work. For me, it doesn't work right. I can't just write it all down in like one hour, you know, on New Year's Eve kind of thing. Uh, I'll like write some stuff down, think about it. Oh, this is actually attainable. Use that. What is it? The uh, smart acronym for goal setting. Uh, I've taken it, so I wrote them all out. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll find it. Um, I know what you're talking about. I yeah. know what you're talking about. Uh, smart goals definition, where like every goal needs uh, five things. Hold on, let me bring it up. Specific, uh, uh, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-based. So, you know, that's the, I, I put out like, what do I want to do? Uh, I don't want to have old man back pain when I wake up every morning. That's not mm-hmm. a goal, though. So I'd write out, like, just di- like just as, uh, as like, raw as I could write it down. Yeah, just what, what, what do you want, want to do, do, right? Not, not the goals, goals just start, start there. And, uh, write that kind of stuff down. down. Um, you know, want to be a better dad kind of thing. Those, mm-hmm. those are open-ended wants, right? And then go, okay, I'm going to write down some goals that are going to, that are going to uh, appease those wants. Yeah. I'll take them to the park this many times a week, specifically. Does it help you guys to write things down, though? Going All back the time. to journal. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Physically writing it mm-hmm. out, you know, with your hands is way different than typing it up on the computer. And I heard if you write it out, you're 29% more likely to remember it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone told me I that stat a long time ago, and I, it just stuck in my head. I love stats. That's so interesting. Really 29%. Percent. Something, Something like that, that. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, well, that, I write everything really down because I have a bad, like, like short-term memory. memory. Yeah. Like, my ADD is off the chain sometimes, and I got in the habit of doing that from stand-up because you get an idea and you're like, oh, don't anybody talk to me. i got to write this down like, because I'll lose it. Yeah. You know? yeah that's, that's great. Do it. And getting in the habit of, like, I'll have a lot of fleeting, like, to-do stuff in my head. You write it out. I used to be really diligent about doing that, too write out everything, uh, organize those notes at the end of the day kind of thing, and then, like, it frees your brain up to think of fun stuff. We're not, you're not stressed. Because there's not this, oh, I know there's stuff to do. Yeah, it's, it's not late. Yeah. It's not, what did I forget? Did I forget something? You're write freeing it down up the, for you remember it. You're freeing up the RAM space on your computer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. But uh, uh, what, so with, with your podcast, what do you, uh, what are you trying to do going forward? Do you have any goals for that? Or Oh, my gosh. That's so sweet of you to ask. Well, you know, I just, it was my 53rd podcast. We've just been blabbing for <laughs> five minutes. You're so sweet. <laughs> so it's, yeah, interviewing it's like, her. It's, it's not interviewing me. It's, and I'm so used to not You're going to set me up on any more though. dates on your podcast? I would listen. <laughs> I am in love with love, that as she I did just not, said. Wait, I, I, call, I followed up because I said I would on your show. And then she was like, who is this? And I was like, we did what? It was like, huh? I forgot about I was wait. Like, God, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> so I forgot about yeah, that. I didn't even want to like <laughs> ask her out, but I said I would on air. I, That's this the second time. Right? <laughs> this happened to us on Bubba Bubba's show. <laughs> Same result. Yeah, and I'm like, that's so fucking funny to me. But that's the that's the four agreements. I, I I said I would do it. Yeah, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> and he didn't take it personally. That's for sure. Yeah. No, I, I I didn't. But I mean, I was just like, oh, what? Are you serious? Yeah. Actually, it's, it's kind, kind of relief because I don't know. Going on dates would be to do some stuff. Uh, yeah, do all the stuff. Yeah. 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 I'm a little bad for guys. Well, if you don't, if you're not like. Really into it. If you're going into it, kind of like you get like, railroaded <laughs> by people. But I mean, if you're halfway, like uh, I don't know about it. It's, it's definitely like uh, on the issue sure. after a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, or you can tell us about your dating life, which oh, like, yeah, yeah. never, that, that is never explain on air. Yeah, that is off the record. That's so funny. We'll do that podcast. Do that. Yeah, that's off, off the, record. the record. But so with my on the record, you know, I I love talking about all sorts of topics. But again, yes, my favorite is love in America. But to answer your question, which I thank you for asking, I would love to grow my podcast. I know I use the word love a lot, but 
because it is my it's, it's biggest brand. passion. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's my biggest passion. I um, would like to grow it. In fact, there was a press release written for my 50th podcast where I shared my story. I was kind of, I really didn't want to share my story, but I did it. This was, so, I'm so flattered and humbled by this. So friends of, friends um, in the newsroom sent me some snapshots, you know, screenshots, because there was a press release written about it, and it was the number one story Yeah. on the floor of the wires. Awesome. I was so... So moved and touched by it. That's good. And well, I, I mean, like, that's oh, you've, you've you've done, done so that. much work already. It's good that you're getting some of the like before even the podcast. You've you've, you've been a, a four time Emmy winning. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, you'll brag about it, so I will. Uh, I'll do it for you. I'll be your like. Uh, uh, what's the guy? Man. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll walk around. My wing man. Yeah. Like, Got <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been really such an interesting year because I got my first national producing credit as uh -huh. well for the Joe Exotic Tires Lies and Cover Up. So how was that? You yeah, let's you. hear about it that. It was, guys, it was so Tiger cool. King? I, I didn't watch the... So, I, really? Yeah, I, by the time, like, I was about to, I, everybody had talked about it, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. I just got lazy about it. Well, I, so I can treat shows like homework <laughs> after a while, right. and I'll be like, uh, I don't wanna... Game of Thrones is like, I don't know, man. That's going to be like 80 hours of my life. Um, but anyway. I know. That is a show that I need to watch. I have not yeah. watched that. I mean, it's a great show. I know. Like I've 90% heard. 90% of it. I, I just need to get through the first few episodes, I think people have said. <laughs> no. well, with, Stay on my with, team. <laughs> with Tiger King, what was so, so I worked for Investigation Discovery, so Tiger King was on Netflix. But the crew at Investigation Discovery contacted me and asked if I would weigh in on the case. Mm -hmm. So, because of my, you know, my background. What's, what's well, the you, case? You have a, a the relationship. The Don Lewis case. Actually, the Don Lewis case, which he, so Don Lewis uh -huh. was the ex-husband of Carol Baskin, who oh, owns okay. the Big Cat, Cat Rescue, Rescue, and he vanished 23 years ago. Right. And it's, it's been a cold case. So I said to the producers, I have not, you know, I was not living here at the time, but I was uh, Carol Baskin's MC for her big mm -hmm. furball event. Yeah. And plus, you know, my the stories I've You're done in, in my Tiger career. King. Yes. I know. I heard. Really? Yeah, she's I heard. in it. Oh, now I'm watching. Oh, sure. my gosh. I, I was, seriously, I was not in it for three seconds. Whatever. But it's so funny. Like, all the. I didn't know it had anything to do with our backyard until recently. Like, I didn't. Oh, know. really? Yeah. I've, um, Dude, there's billboards about the. Like, they brought it back. Where the, yeah, the, yeah, to find the, find the real killer or hmm. get evidence on Cheryl Baskin's. I, I think this is all chicks just being so in love with serial killer stuff. <laughs> And murder, well, well, murder yeah, podcast and, people yeah. do get obsessed with that yeah. well so I weigh in on the case they have uh -huh. a producer in from LA uh -huh. interviewing me and the producer who was great his name is Joel Nassam said you know so is there anything you want to add and so you know I said you may want to ask this let's talk about this so executive producers in LA saw it and with COVID you know it's hard for anybody to travel right. so they asked me would you be willing to take on a larger role in the show? And I said, sure. So yeah. I ended up producing the part, a, a lot of it in Tampa. And Jim Rathman, who I really think you guys should interview on your show because he's okay. such a cool dude and you guys are cool dudes. He was. Thank you. No, seriously, the guy is so cool, right? He was Some people in, call me um, cool, Eric. The military, so thank you. <laughs> Anybody for their service. So Barack Obama's Secret, Secret Service, service Detail. detail. He oh, yeah. was in the FBI, so he and he had the number one podcast in the world at one point. Really, it was True Life, True Crime. Mm -hmm. He solved the cold case on air, mm -hmm. so he was Whoa. weighing in on the show. Wow! And so I did all the interviews with him in Orlando and Tampa, and he really is the star of the show. But that's how that came to fruition, and so. Now I have a producer credit. It's really cool. I I have to say it was one of those like moments for me. That yeah, was really that's cool. awesome. Well, and Eric, I've got to thank you for this because remember when I was so super stressed out about shooting my own video and I'd be uh -huh. like, Eric, what do I do? What do I do? I was nominated for an Emmy this year. I didn't win, but for the One Blood stuff. That's great. The One Blood story. Congratulations. So thank you. So for you me, professionally, it was, you know. Yeah, with everything bad, there's a good. You may, <laughs> like, it's in a weird way, you got the opportunity because of this weird year, you know, like. Crazy uh, year, yes. You know, um, it, it's strange that 
sometimes those kind of things indirectly kind of trickle down like that. It's um, true. I would have never got an opportunity to produce a national show if it wasn't yeah. for this. So <laughs> we could look back in 2020. It might have been the best year ever. Mm-hmm. Might. Right. Best summer ever, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Saying, what I wrote in your yearbook. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what one of those things were? Wait, who? What happened with all the? Is the case still going? I don't even know. Yeah, so we might be due. Uh, I feel like my dad. I'm telling my dad about a show. I'm acting like my dad. Like, what is this? Netflix? 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 Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that is. What What is this show like? I so this one, this show that we did is on Investigation Discovery. So where, where and it, can people grab? You that? can. It's everywhere, like on uh-huh. cable. I mean, it's so it's it's an independent channel, and I'm I'm horrible because I don't have traditional TV anymore. So Nobody either does. you know I'm getting on an Amazon Prime or Netflix, but Investigation Discovery is its own show that you can download, and it's on every cable network. There could be a part two, but honestly, I really feel my heart aches for Don Lewis's family because he has three daughters, mm-hmm. an ex-wife, not Carol Baskin, his first wife. That you know, the family wants closure. What happened to him? Where is he? It's still a missing persons case. The sheriff has gone on the record, Sheriff Chet Cronister, and has said that he thinks something horrible happened to him. So I think most people think that he was met with foul play. Well, I mean, the setup is there to destroy any evidence, you know, of a body. Because, you know, Fever to the tiger. You're not understanding what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Well, you looked at the pigs. Oh, good. Is, is it, it like snatch? You feed the pigs. Right. Well, well, it's a great impression. Thing, it was <laughs> and what was crazy about Netflix? So Netflix and Tiger King, uh-huh. right? Yeah. That show. Here it was a docu series on Netflix, but it was in the midst of the coronavirus, so so many people were staying home, and it was episode three. They never thought the storyline about Don Lewis would become the show. Right. And then everybody started talking about Don Lewis and Carol Baskin, and that became yeah. I, the whole thing yeah. has all these different little tributaries. Mm-hmm. Go like all, I mean, there the guy. There's another guy who's in in Tiger King that you know has tigers and stuff that just got arrested mm-hmm. for you know illegally owning animal or whatever. But like anybody in that business is a little you know off. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's like just it's like, zero in on one of them. <laughs> oh, you're a murder suspect. What about yeah. this guy? Yeah, illegal uh, animal tracker. Look, tracker. horse people, people that are really into horses weird me out. Yeah. Like, I, I wrote a bit yesterday. I just wrote a premise. I, I remember growing up and having to go to the your friend's house or the friend that you didn't know owned a bird in the house. And you're like, oh, fuck, shit, there's a bird in there. Fucking gross. <laughs> Why do you own a bird? Yeah. <laughs> They don't, they're sure terrible. They're cool. They talk. Fuck. For that's you would love a parrot. Fine. No. Uh, what yeah, are you a pirate? Like, what do you need? What a bird just all dander and shit everywhere. I'm buying you a bird. It always it's corresponded crazy. with that bad station wagon with the seats that face backwards outside. Love that. <laughs> we're we're, we're all like, up. oh, this is probably not good for kids to sit. Oh no. Right. Horrible. Yeah, but if you sit in back, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that I just those right two things went together. Real well. Um, well, how about this? Because I, I got a heart out in a second. Uh, we, we've a- I don't know if we've asked you this. Uh, we try to ask all our guests the first time they're on, but mm-hmm. I think we, we started doing this question after uh, you've been on a few times. Um, but what advice would you give your 13-year-old self? What advice? Would I- to love yourself. And again, using the word like be yourself be confident. Even if you don't feel like you're confident, be confident. It's perception. Everything mm-hmm. is perception. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't, and I'm guilty of it too, right? I've been so guilty of it. Don't, don't be insecure. Like, be confident about yourself and, and love, love yourself, yourself and accept yourself for who you are. Because if you do that, then you set your standard, right? And mm-hmm. you're not going to let someone treat you Poorly, and, and that, that is the best hope. And my daughter happens to be 13 years old. Oh yeah. Okay. So I tell her that all the time. Chop love yourself up, send it and to be her. confident. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I have a lot of follow-up questions from your advice to yourself, but I'm going to listen to your your 50th podcast, and I, I'm going to guess there something in that through line that that timeline will tell us uh, some of those follow-up questions I might have. 
Uh, you got anything? No, that's it. Anything, thank you. anything no, to promote? Thank you, I can't no, believe thank it's you over. so much for having it's me on. So I fast. really appreciate on it. On the guys. record, on. I would love, again, on the record with Serena Fazan, or, you know, I'm trying to build up my social media again, like Facebook, mm -hmm, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, because starting from scratch. Keep blogging too, girl. Yeah, okay, thank you. That helps. Yeah. 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 That's, so I, I really appreciate it. I think it, guys. one helps the other. Serena Fazan yeah. news on most uh, mm -hmm. social yep. media. Yep. Well, thanks for coming back. No, thanks for having me anytime. Yeah, all right. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. Sweat, 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 sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, my, my sweat equity. Sweat equity. What about my sweat equity?